and they have to be able to be in a position where now those fighter jets, those F-16s, make a big difference in terms of being able to deal with what is coming down the road. After insisting for months Kiev didn't need them, President Joe Biden caved to the relentless pressure campaign from Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to facilitate the transfer of U.S.-made F-16s to the Ukrainian Air Force in the coming months. Zelensky, who had already rallied NATO allies Great Britain, the Netherlands, and Belgium to his cause, flew to Japan, where leaders of the G7 nations were meeting for a face-to-face -face with Biden to close the deal. At a press conference in Hiroshima, Biden said the F-16s would not arrive in time for the expected counteroffensive, assuming it actually begins this summer. The U.S. agreement to train pilots and allow other countries to give their Lockheed Martin F-16s to Ukraine came with a big condition. I have a flat assurance from the from Zelensky that they will not, they will not use it to go on and move into Russian geographic territory. But wherever Russian troops are within Ukraine and the area, they would be able to do that. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke to CNN's Jake Tapper about why now. We can look forward to the long-term capacity of Ukraine to be able to defend itself and deter Russian aggression. Fourth generation fighter aircraft, Western fighter aircraft, F-16s are relevant to that fight. That's why the president uh, told his G-7 colleagues this weekend that he will in fact support the training of Ukrainian pilots. Sullivan said the U.S. wants to spend the funds Congress has appropriated for Ukraine this year on immediate needs, not refurbishing F-16s. So while it will help with training, it will look to other allies to provide the planes.